Hey, this is Linda Kay. I wanted to get on here and share the word of the Lord that I got. I believe that the Lord is making uh, some strategic adjustments in 2024. Uh, and not, it's not that God every year changes things or you get this word every year that every year we're going to get a new word. There is a follow through of many words. And one of those words I got years ago was roaring. I heard the word, she roars, or the body of Christ, she as the church roars. And I was like, okay, that's a lion. What does that mean? So the word, the, when you hear the word roar or someone roaring, it is a pronunciation or a pronouncement or declaration of something. So when you hear a lion in, um, the jungle roaring. Uh, sometimes th they're roaring because they're trying to gain territory. Uh, they're roaring because somebody's trying to come up on them, trying to harm them. And also roaring is doesn't have to necessarily come from an animal. It's also roaring coming from a person. You can roar as in disgust or you can roar as in uh, your spirit, man, or you're saying, I'm tired of this. I want something different. And I believe that 2024 is a time of embarking into soaring and roaring. Roaring will represent as a lion. There's a scripture in, I think, um, I think it's in first Peter. I think it's in first Peter. I could be wrong right now. I don't have my notes with me. And it talks about the devil goes about seeking whom he may devour. He goes about as a roaring lion. Now, don't miss this part. We usually don't understand that he's imitating uh, Jesus and Jesus' people because Jesus is the lion tribe of Judah, right? That is like the brand of, Ju uh, of Jesus. The brand of Jesus is the lion. He's represented as the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. And in this year, God wants us to verbally de uh, declare, pronunciate, pronounce that God is King, right? King of Kings, Lord of Lords. But also the King of King and Lord of Lords lives in you, right? He lives in you and he wants you to go about not as, but as, like the devil goes as, as in imitating. You are, you should be gaining ground. You should, the things that has come into your life, the things that has um, taken over, you just, just gave up. You said, well, I'm just going to let my weight go. I'm just going to let, um, I'm just going to let my house go. I'm just going to let uh, my life ain't going right, so I'm just going to just just let it go. But God wants you to gain your territory back. You might have said, well, I was believing God for a bigger house, but, but you know, I don't have enough people to agree with me. All the things that we say. But the Spirit of God is saying to us that in 2024, it's time for you to declare with your mouth, pronounce with your mouth. That is your authority. Your mouth is your authority. The lion's mouth is his authority. When he roars, the roar can be heard for miles. It's not just in that area. So our roar is to say what God said and to disperse the enemy to say, you can't stay here. The Lord rebukes you. I am Jesus, the firstborn, and we are of many brethren. We are many brethren. So in 2024, we're going to soar. And we're going to roar. But when I'm talking about roaring again, you're talking about taking dominion and territory that you already have. God told the Israelites back in Genesis and Exodus that I've already prepared a place for you. I've already prepared it, but you got to go get it. You got to obtain it. You got to go and claim it to be yours. I've already given it to you. I've already made the preparations. That's huge, y'all. That's huge. He says, I've already done what is necessary to get you the honey, to get you the grapes, to get you the milk, all the things that uh, I want for you. I want you to come into a place of more than enough. 
There is a place that we've all been through, through just enough, almost enough, but he wants you to come into the more. And you do that through your roar. Women of God, I know you go like, well, I'm not no man. I don't be roaring. No, you're going to roar with your authority. And you're going to take back that which the enemy has snuck in, lied to you, told you that you ain't all that because things weren't going your way. 2024 is the more. My husband, Apostle Leon Lee said more in 24. But guess what? It's all of the word. But we can declare the word of the Lord. We can declare and say that the Lord want us to roar in 2024. Not only roar, but soar. In the soar, if you think about a soaring, you can think about the eagle. The eagle is one of the eagles that soars through the sky. And some other ones do that. Hawks can soar, things like that. But the eagle is known in the Bible. It, you know, God uses that particular animal to describe uh, his people, to be able to say, I'm going to renew your energy. I'm going to renew you like uh, eagle renews himself by breaking his beak and growing out something else. And when he breaks his beak, it really hurts when they do that and grows out a whole new beak. That that beak is representation of going to be able to grab new type of food, being able to uh, capture the food quicker, you know, be able to grasp it and not drop it. And so there are some things that we've dropped, some things that we did not see that was ours and that we didn't take advantage of. I am one of those people. It's some things that I would just say, oh, Jesus is coming back. I don't need all that. But guess what? God said, I want you to soar and roar, meaning that the eagle can see up from above. He can see things that you can't see by looking up. The eagle soars high. He can look down, he or she, and can see, right, what needs to be gathered, what needs to, uh, he needs to gather um, authority or take possession of, right? So that's what an eagle does. An eagle has the ability to renew its body by shedding off its uh, uh, leaves, shedding off its uh, feathers. It can literally shed off, it can go through a mutation, a, a, a molding that it begins to regenerate themselves. And God says that we have that ability. Well, how can I do that, uh, Linda Kay? You do that through the word of God. In the New Testament, it says that take off those things that are old and put on Christ. And then I said, well, how do I put Christ on? He said, you put Christ on by the knowledge. It's in Ephesians. You put Christ on by what you know about him. What you know God wants from you. What you know that God desires of you. That's how you put on Christ, right? So you put him on, you put on who he is, what he represents. God says that I gave Jesus a name above any other name. This name is so great. This name is so good. This name, every knee shall bow to this name. Every tongue shall confess. That is powerful. Every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord, right? Every disease, everything that's not like God shall bow down to the name of Jesus. So in 2024, you're going to soar and you're going to roar. But you do that through the information and the understanding and knowledge that you have of Jesus Christ. There's a scripture over in Ephesians that talks about... Um, that we should become, we should come into the full statue of Christ Jesus. So you're not, or should not be comparing yourself among yourselves. You should not be, uh, oh, I wish I was like this person. I wish I was like that person. Per se, is nothing wrong with gaining uh, characteristics of another person. I've been around women of God and people that I like. Oh, I like the way they conduct themselves in this. I like the way they carry themselves. Uh, in this situation. I like how they didn't get all huffy and puffy and, and how they just, you know, maneuvered through and they was cool, calm, collected. I said, God, give me that. I want to be cool, calm, and collected when things happen to me because I am a sensitive person. And a lot of times I carry things on in my spirit for days. And I don't think that that's faith. I don't think that that's um, what God wants for us. Like, 
um, something to come up and it, it would be like major to me. But when at the end of the day, it's really not that major. It, it's, it's really not. It's something that God will help you take care of. But it'd be devastating to me. It's like, why is this happening? And, you know, internally, so no one knows it from the outside, but internal, internally, I am struggling. I'm suffering. And, and this morning, just this morning, and uh, even though I know you might see this a year later, five months later, but at this time of this uh, video, this morning, God says, why are you carrying that, Linda? Why don't you ask me to help you? He says, why, why do you do that? I go like, God, I know. I think that I can handle all this stuff a lot of times myself. He said, it's things that I can go into your emotions that you can't fix. He said, so you have to give it to me. You have to say, you have to acknowledge that it's there. You have to say, I'm having a problem with this. Case in point, I was thinking about taxes and, and I have a fear of IRS. I, I do. I do. I have a fear of IRS because they're like bullies to me. They're like demons to me. It's like you're making your money and they coming to take it. And, and, and it bothers me that they have the ability to say what you should do with your money. You live in this government, you owe us money. You work for it and we want your money. We want taxes. And it's been going on all the way from the almost, almost not maybe the beginning of times, but it was definitely in Jesus' time. There was a time that they came to Jesus and they said, hey, uh, should, uh, should we give taxes? You know, should we be doing taxes? Should we give taxes? And, I, and, and, and Jesus says, well, let me see who, who, who name is on this money that we're giving taxes to. And I think it was Caesar. And they said, well, give unto Caesar was Caesar and give unto God was God. And so when I was thinking about this, I'm going to get back to soaring and roaring. And this is one of the things of soaring and roaring. Ego and the lion working together. He said to them, yeah, you should give unto Caesar what Caesar and give unto God what is God. But y'all, what I noticed in this time that Jesus told Peter, hey, go to the lake. The first fish you catch, take money out and give our taxes, me and your taxes. Now, he didn't go into his treasury because they had money. Now, I don't know whether their money looked different or did they have some gold coins or silver coins or they worked through a different economical system. But Jesus had money. He was not poor. He did not tell Peter, go get money out the fish because they was poor. That's what we be thinking. And he didn't have no means. But Jesus used his soaring and roaring, his ability to scout out, to look for and go out and see and uh, investigate. And he knew where money was, right? And God's going to give you that same thing. You're going to know where the money is. You're going to know where to go. You're going to know where to travel. You're going to know where to seek out. You're going to scout out the land, both through air and by land, by air and by land, by eagle view, by lion view. And Jesus, Peter got that money out the fish mouth. God used Peter's ability. He was a very great skilled fisherman. Jesus used his gift, his skill set, to acquire that thing that was needed. Y'all, this is so good to me. God's going to allow you to use your skill set. Hear me? Your skill set and those things that you possess to gain the information, to gain the financial status that you need, the financial state that you need, and those things that you are desiring, he's going to give you witty inventions, he's going to give you witty ideas, and he's going to give you ways to implement. So not only getting the ideas in the air, you also going to be able to use your own physicality to go out and gain the territory. Just like when Moses told um, the, the 12, uh, they were what, the 12 spies, I guess, but they were uh, 12 represented the 12 tribes of Israel went out to represent. It says, go out and see this land that God has commissioned us to gain, that God has already said is ours. So he sends them out. 12 goes out. 10 comes back and say, hey, it's true. There is land. But we're not able to gain it. Listen. Two said, oh, yeah, 
It's exactly what God told you, Moses. There is property. There is a great plethora of, of, of volume of, of honey and milk and grapes. Everything that God told you, it is true. We saw with our own eyes. And the two said, and we are well able to possess it. The other teens go, oh, no, I look like grasshopper. Oh, there's giants over there. We ain't trying to go out this way. These some big people over there. And we, we don't want to try to fight them. And we, we, we're good where we are. We'll just stay over here in this little wilderness and, and let God keep feeding us the manna and, and, and the quail and meat at, uh, the meat during the, uh, at night and the manna during the day. And the other two, Caleb and Joshua says, we are well able. We're about to scout out our land. They saw it from air in the mountains and they saw it through land. They was able to see from an eagle's view and a lion's view. And they says that we possess what is needed to go and gather that. And a lot of times we don't know that we have what it takes. We don't know that what God has for us is the ability to gain it is in us. So 2022, excuse me, 2022, 2024, y'all, it's the year of the roar. It's the year of the soar. And he's saying that you possess everything you need to gain your aerial view groundage and your land view. You ever seen an engineer ever cross a, a street or whatever and you notice that they're right there with these, these uh, cameras or these... Um, Something they're looking through, it may, may, might not be binoculars, but they're looking through this viewfinder type thing to make sure that they have what they need in alignment. And they use these special viewfinders, view cameras to make sure that they can line up the street, what they're trying to do, where they're trying to go. And they use these additional lenses outside of their own eyes and their own glasses to see precision, precisely where they need to dig, where they need to mark. And that's what God's giving you, eagle's view. Eagles can see from miles in the sky, his prey, his prey. Uh, yeah, what he's going to be eating. Yeah, his prey. He can see and dive down in and get that thing that he desires. Be it a fish be it a rabbit, be it a raccoon, be it a snake, whatever it is, he has the area view to be able to see that. God wants to, for us, to get an understanding. Us, I'm talking us that's born, born again. You, If you're not born again, ask Jesus to come into your life, your heart. He loves you. He wants to make your, house, your, your, your life a new, better, greater, grander. When you're going to go through anyway, you all you might as well go through with Jesus knowing that he's going to take care of all my cares because I'm going to cast all my cares upon him. And so knowing that, he's like, I have given you the ability to see eagle eyes. I've given you the, I've given you the ability to see through the Holy Spirit, by the Holy Spirit, that when you receive Jesus Christ and you ask the Holy Spirit to come into your heart. And you ask the Holy Spirit to begin to reveal and expose things that you're not aware of. Things that's going on in your life. Things that's going on in your family. He wants to give you area view. Area view on your job. Things that you don't know that they're doing behind your back. Right? Things that they're plotting and planning. He wants, to, he wants your senses. He wants your senses to get keener to where you can see the enemy plotting. You can see what he's doing, what he's got, trying to, how he's trying to come up and do things to harm you, to hurt you. And, uh, and you can be ready to stand where you need to stand when the enemy tries to come against you and your family, right? Uh, then also, he's given us the lion's roar, because we are lions, ruling and reigning, taking territory step by step by step. And that's what the Israelites had to do. They had to take it step by step by step. God told them that I'm going to let you take the land little by little. Now, there are certain times that God give you quantum leaps. But he told them at this time, I'm not going to overwhelm you. Right? Some of you are ready to be overwhelmed. Some of you are ready. You've been through enough. You've seen enough. You're ready to be catapulted 100 yards ahead of other people. Some of us need 
every 12 uh, inches, next 12 inches, next 12 inches, next 12 inches. But some of you all are ready for the 100 yard dash. Some of you all are ready for the 100 yard dash. And you might say to me, I hear what you're saying, Linda Kay, um, but how do I get this? How do I tap into this? It's You acquire it through your, your confession. You say, I believe this word. I, I, I bear witness in what, this, what she's saying. 2024, I want to roar and I want to soar. I want to walk in the eagle in the lion's anointing. And I want to gain back. I want to urinate. That's what the lion does. He urinates. He put his smell in an area where no one, when they come across, they go like, oh, I can't come across this line. That's what we want to do to the devil who's going about seeking whom he can devour as a roar lion. He's going to smell our God scent. He's going to smell your God scent. And you do that by declaring, God, I accept this word that I'm soaring and I'm roaring. I repent for anything that I have been disobedient because we think it's okay to disobey God, a lot of us, and do it five years later. Me included, me included. Long as I do it, then God ought to be pleased, right? But I'm not saying that God don't tell you something and then there's a process into which you do it or that it comes about. Just like when God told the Israelite that I got land for you and I'm ready for you to go and um, acquire the land, to uh, uh, assume the land, right? So you declare, God, there is property that I desire. There are businesses that I desire. God, I want a business. God, I want some property. God, give me some property that uh, can make me money, right? So you ask of God, and God, I'm soaring and roaring. You walk around, said, I'm seeing in the spirit. Because you you can see beyond these, beyond your physical sight. You have a spiritual sight in God that he can show you why, while you land in the bed or while you sitting on the sofa watching TV, your minds can go into other places and other arenas while you sitting in one place. That is the ego spirit, the ego sight in the spirit, right? So you just ask him. He says, we have not because we ask not. Everything, it's because it's in the Bible doesn't mean we automatically get it. It, it, it doesn't. You have to ask. You have to assert yourself. You have to claim it. You have to call it, right? God promised Abraham, you're going to have some children. You're going to have seed, right? And uh, you're going to be fathers of many nations, right? Sarah, you're going to be mother of many nations, right? But for years, 25 years, they did not have any kids. And then God did a name change, like they're not having faith enough or to bring about what I need them to bring about in this earth realm. So he gave them a name change. So you might need to change the things that you're saying, right? You might need to change the things that how you're talking and how you're reacting to things, right? So he said, instead of calling you a Abram and Sarai, I'm going to call you Sarah and Abraham. When he did that, everybody that called him called in, he's a... He is um, uh, a father of many nations. Every time they said Abraham, father of many nations, father of many nations, Abraham, father of many nations. When they said Sarah, mother of many nations, they were calling those things that are not presently there to come into activation. Calling those things that be not as though they are. It wasn't that it wasn't there. But I needed to call it forth. So he started having other people to call forth what God wanted out of Abraham and out of Sarah. And as they did that, I don't think it was a year later, that they manifest their son, Isaac. And Isaac's name represents joy. He was the joy of the Lord. He was their joy. And out of Isaac, he had, uh, I think, what? Uh, twins. Right. And then the twins had a whole bunch of kids. Right. So then Isaac, Isaac had Jacob. Yeah. Isaac had Jacob and Esau. And so through that, and then it just, and then Jacob just had a whole bunch of kids. And then Esau, I don't know all his kids, but he had a bunch of kids. Right. And then let's not forget Ishmael. He had a whole plethora, a whole bunch of kids. Right. 
So in that, God is like, you got to call some things that's been told to you. Or there are things that you read in the word of God that you got to claim it and you got to accept it. And you got to say, I'm soaring and roaring. And that thing that God promised me 10 years ago, I'm going to have that this month. I'm going to have it every, every day. Say now it's mine. Not I'm going to get it. But every time you say it, faith is now. Now faith is. I have it now. I am soaring. I am roaring. Just like second, I'm in with this. Second Chronicles chapter four, verses eight through 10. Uh, 9 through 10. 1 Chronicles, not Corinthians, 1 Chronicles 4, verse 9 through 10, talks about a young man or a man by the name of Jabez. And Jabez's mother said, you brought me a lot of pain when I birthed you. And Jabez prayed a prayer because he was more honorable than his brothers. He was more respected than his brethren. And he went to the Lord. And he says, God of Lord of Israel, Grant me, enlarge my territory, allow me not to go through pain or evil, right? He goes on through and he says that expand me, enlarge me, bring unto me property. Let me gain territory in my marriage, in my life. These are things I will be saying. Territory in my family. And the Bible says, and God granted him his request. It was a request. Because his mother had named him, you a pain in my, you know what? You brought me great pain. And Jabez no longer wanted to be a representation of pain. He says, no longer let me represent pain, but let me represent prosperity, property, increase, enlargement. Pray that prayer. First Chronicles 4, enlarge my territories, right? And I believe God is going to grant you as you soar and you roar in 2024. You be blessed.